Tom, uh, the side lost to a difficult Watford side last time out. What are your reflections after looking back at the game? We don't... Um, I don't think the game's too much different from, from the Oxford game, in fairness. I, I think the the difference is, you know, we scored at the right times and, and it changes the game completely like it, like it would do. So there's not too much different. Both sides highlighted that. Um, there's areas that we're really proud about and, and areas that um, I'm not surprised us, but we're just pleased that have come out in an abundance um, in both performances. So there's there's lots there, you know. There's 180 minutes of footage. There's there's lots of things to go through, and and we're proud of of you know the fact where we're at with that performance. And and yeah, we just we build on it and move on, just like we'll do against any side, whether we've won the game, drawn or lost. The team now face their first game against League Leaders Portsmouth. What are your thoughts looking forward to the fixture? We're looking forward to going down there. You know, like you said, Portsmouth at the top of the league, so. It's, a, it's another challenge framed in a slightly different way. The last two challenges have, have been big challenges and one ones that we feel that we've kind of risen the challenge to and, and we're stepping on and, and putting ourselves in a, in a bracket where um, we're playing in a better way and, and we're trying to bring our principles and our outcomes against against really top sides and, and Portsmouth give another opportunity to do that. Um, we haven't played Portsmouth this year, like you said, but we played them a long time ago um, in the FA Cup. So... It'd be good to go and touch base with us if you're the staff. And and yeah, both sides are miraculously different from, from that fixture. So yeah, we're we're in a good space. You know, our performances have been good in the last two. So there's no reason to be downhearted about a defeat to Watford because, you know, they're a fantastic side. So look, we go there with full confidence. We go there with belief in our ability and we go there aiming to go and get three points like we do every game. Um, Romulus is set to play three games in eight, eight, in eight days. Uh, what do, toll does that have on the player and what does that add to your like? Um, I think from a player point of view, it doesn't probably change too much. I mean, we're training regular anyway. We try and have as much intensity in our training as possible to make sure that we're replicating um, game playing and, and game scenarios. So, so that's in there. From a management perspective, look, we've got a fantastic squad and um, the players that we bring off the bench the players that rotate into the side are all capable of of achieving what we want them to achieve, which is which is really pleasing from my perspective. Sometimes you can have benches that you know are either impact players or players that aren't at the same level as potentially your starting group, and and that's absolutely not the case for us. So so there will be some rotation across the week just to make sure that players are protected in the right way and players that are fresher are getting that opportunity because you know, the same is going to be for everybody else. You know, everyone else is playing, you know, Wednesday or Thursday night, I think. So it's going to be the same for those sides. And if we've got players that potentially don't play 90 minutes on a Thursday or don't play 90 minutes on a Sunday and they're available and they're at the same level, then of course we're going to use them. So it makes a lot of sense from our point of view, but we're excited because we get to go and play competitive fixtures. I said it last week about having to to play friendlies. You know, the fact that we've got three in, three and seven or three and eight, just means we've got competitive fixtures. It's pleasing that the midweek one's at home because um, that's always always difficult. But but yeah, we've got two tough away games. Portsmouth on top of the league. Um, Plymouth fighting for their lives. You know, it, um, in that relegation battle, MK Dons are, are kind of in and out of form and all want to establish themselves and move themselves at the table midweek. So all three games are going to provide really different challenges for different reasons. But three challenges that if we want to be successful, then we're going to have to overcome. The team are back on the coach for another long journey. Um, looking at the table, where, where you're playing doesn't seem to matter. As you picked up uh, just one more point on at home than you have on the road in the same amount of games. Do you think that says about something about the squad? I don't think we put any thought in it, to be honest. Um, like I said before, we've got a no-excuse culture. So just because we travel or we don't travel, just because we play at home or we play in grass or 3G, like there's there's no excuses with what we do, like we're prepared for it. So uh, it's pleasing that there's not a, there's not kind of a, a big change in that and that we're not, um, quote, like a home side that, you know, can't travel or, or vice versa. You know, we, we travel really well, but we can't get things going at home. So, you know, for us, it's about being consistent and, and the top sides are consistent. They win everywhere. Um, and our job is to eventually go and do that. So, it's pleasing that we haven't got an issue with those things. We 
have experience. We've got players that have experienced travel for a long period of time. As staff, we've experienced travel and we understand how we need to facilitate that to make sure the players get out of it what they need to and eat at the right times and, and stretch their legs at the right times, that sort of stuff. But but yeah, I'm just happy that there's no kind of correlation between home and away games or there's no issue that needs potential solving. Um, Portsmouth have picked up every available point in the league since the end of October. Uh, what would it take to stop them and how is this different to recent games? Um, I would say different. We're playing a side that are top of the league. We've been playing in the last two weeks sides that are aiming to be top of the league um, and, and want to be and we'll, all three of them will be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. So it doesn't change too much. I think, you know, if we put loads of effort and we put loads of time and loads of thought process into, into Portsmouth and, and adapted how we did things and really worked hard on them, it's going to be very difficult to replicate that throughout the week. You know, when are we going to have the opportunity to spend that amount of time on MK Dunn? When are we going to have that amount of time to spend before before Plymouth? So our structure and how we work stays the same because that's how we want it to work. That's how the players want it to work. And ultimately, that's, that's the best way to work within busy weeks is to make sure that we're focusing on the things that we need to focus on, doing the things that we need to do. Um, and yeah, we go into that game. Like I said, we're, we're confident as well just because... We didn't get the result last weekend doesn't mean that we're not confident of our performance. You know, if we we score at the right times, the game would be, in my opinion, very similar to the Oxford game. Vice versa, you know, if we conceded at the wrong times like we did, then the, the Oxford game would be similar to the Watford one. So we're confident in what we've got in terms of player ability, in terms of staffing, in terms of everything that we go there with. And our job is to go and put on a performance. And we know if we keep these performances, which we've done, over three weekends now. If we continue to do that, then we'll be in a really good space come the end of the season and, and we'll be prepared for, for next season as well. There's always competition uh, for selection with how uh, the depth of the squad that you have. Uh, one place that's been up for debate over recent weeks is at centre-back with Courtney Jones and Holly Finch fighting for that position. Obviously, it's something you like to see as a coach. Um, can you talk to us about it? Yeah, I think, look... If you don't have a if you don't have a squad at this level, I think you're very naive thinking that you're gonna have eleven players that are one gonna be available, consistently available and always in form. You know, Courtney has been playing really well. Um and, and we're really pleased with with her this season. The amount of work she put in in the off season has paid off and she's been really well. And then, you know, she she's not been well um I think it's two weeks ago now. Holly came in, took her opportunity and, and therefore, you know, deserves the credit that she that she gets for it. And Courtney's an intelligent person. Like, she's very aware that, you know, she watched the game that we all watched from the sideline as well, where Holly's had a fantastic game. So she doesn't walk in the dressing room or, excuse me, she doesn't walk in the dressing room or, or come to me on a Tuesday and go, you know, why am I not starting? She understands. She understands that Holly's played really well. And if it was the other way around, she'd expect to be given that, that shirt and that exposure. Like I said, this week in terms of the squad, he's going to be a little bit different because we have three and eight. We have two in three or four days, you know, going Thursday to Sunday. So things are going to be a little bit different this week. But in terms of how we work, like players understand it. That's how players wanted it. They wanted it to be competitive. They want players fighting for shirts. They don't want to feel comfortable all the time. But they understand and respect that when they're playing well, they're going to get selected more often than not. And when players in front of them are playing well, then they understand that they've got to buy their time. They've got to put the team first, which is important. And they've got to wait for their opportunity. And when they do get it, they've got to take it. And from my perspective, that allows great things because it means that when the player is coming off the bench or when the player gets a start, that they are putting everything and everything they've got to make sure that they take the opportunity. So, so yeah, we've got, we've got a really good squad. Like I said, we will add to the squad. Um, for the remainder of the season. Um, not loads, but we'll add kind of parts to that squad and, and make sure that we're competitive across the board. And and yeah, we'll look to keep pushing performance through a number of factors and, and competitiveness within the squad is, is definitely a factor in that. Finally, from me, uh, there's been a few niggles and injuries in the squad over the last few weeks, but Hannah Butcher particularly has been out for a couple of weeks now. You said she's back uh, training. Is she in contention for Sunday? Yeah, absolutely. She's she's chomping at the bit now. Um, last week was kind of her first week back. You know, you're getting used to it. You're getting used to the movements again. You're getting used to touching the ball. Like, it's only a couple of weeks, but 
obviously from a player point of view, kind of feels like a, a lifetime sometimes. So, so yeah, she's back in. She she trained well. Um, Tuesday she'll train again tonight. So we expect her to be in, in full contention for the squad. Um, and everyone else is is pretty much in a similar bracket now. We we haven't picked up anything um, that we're not aware of. Um, that isn't long term stuff that we're managing. Cold and flu season seems to hopefully um, be kind of subsiding a little bit. So, you know, numbers are good like they were last week and, and we're competitive and, yeah, things are moving in the right direction, which is always pleasing from a, a management point of view, but also from a coaching point of view, being able to put on the sessions and the type of sessions that, that we want to. So so that's positive. But, yeah, I don't I don't see any kind of major, major kind of injury concerns or anything like that happening. Okay. Um, so, in your post-match thoughts against what you said that uh, your your side will be playing with no fear and how uh, no one's really expecting you to get a result against what to say out of the league, you know, they've won all these games. Is there any fear that your side might start to become slightly complacent and possibly their league position? Obviously, if you're still sick at the moment, is there any chance of that ever creeping into the mind of your players or are you making sure each week you will let them know that We've got to be at it if we want to, you know, reach those top spots. Um, it's a mixture, really. From a from a management point of view, my job is to just kind of remind players of of what their aims are. Is to make sure that we're driving those factors. But the squad that we have, the players as individuals and as part of a team, don't don't need that motivation to go to to go and play against Oxford or Watford or Portsmouth or or MK or Plymouth or whoever that is. They'll have different motivations you know for this week we're we're playing against the top of the league which is a motivation factor in itself to go and prove to everyone again you know that that Oxford wasn't a, a one-hit wonder sort of game we've got MK Dons which hurt us a lot in terms of the result uh towards the start of the season we'd had two really good back-to-back -back results we played well against MK Dons and we conceded um a, a sort of strange goal in in sort of the last minute of the game and, and that hurt us a lot especially being midweek as well and, and Plymouth, you know, from, from the FA Cup exit, we didn't perform in a way that we were proud of. We we lost an opportunity to progress in the cup competition that's important and the players were hurting after that. And something that we drive as a group is very much about reflection. So after each game, we we sat down, you know, we we looked at it and, and we understood that those feelings mattered and we still need to keep hold of those feelings because they're things that drive performance. So, you know, we watched MK celebrate that win Rightly so, you know, they scored in the last minute, they got three points, they deserved it. Um, we watched Plymouth celebrate, you know, and it was important that we sat down and went, you know what, like we're gonna harbor this as motivation. And and intrinsically now players are, you know, will be pushing themselves to make sure that they don't have that feeling again because nobody likes that feeling. No one likes losing games of football. Um and and we're all competitive. So so those things will will be present in, in the next few weeks. So for me, there's not like loads we need to do. We don't need to fad things in. We don't need to, you know, clip things that some people have said or done or whatever. Like we've got our own motivations. Sometimes that that does come from different competitive games, but the players themselves want to be the most successful. So to do that, we've got to win games of football. So whether we have a, a motivation driven from the opposition, or whether we have a, a motivation driven from just our own desires, generally the players will will push up themselves. Yeah. And um, with Portsmouth, obviously the last competitive loss was against London City, who are sitting in the uh, championship. Is there any sort of tweaks or anything you've got in mind ready for the game that you might go, oh, I might, I might change this here slightly just to counteract their sort of attack or maybe their, you've seen some clips of them playing, you've gone, okay, that's a, like, that's a weak point we can, you know, go for. But is there anything like that that you seen or that you've got, you know, ready for the game? I thought so. I think there are look with every team like we do, we do our research and we're aware of things, but more so from a coaching point of view, so that we can drip free some of the principles in, you know, whether we play against, for instance, whether we play against a back four or back three, it means that, you know, our numerical numbers in in high areas are going to be, you know, the same or underloaded or we're going to find certain overload so within training that week we'll, we'll have those themes but I think setting up a side to go and play against the side is again it's difficult because if we set up you know for for Portsmouth to play a certain system in a certain style in a certain way 
and we put all of our effort into that, then what happens if they change that 15 minutes in? Then all of our plans and our thoughts go go to part and then they have the ascendancy. So it's about just understanding principles, understanding scenarios within the game, understanding situations. And we then just look at what we can do to, to maximise our game. So how are we going to bring out the best in our game? And we're not fully accomplished in, in how we're playing at the moment. So our focus is on developing that until we feel that we're at our maximum, then we've got to sustain that maximum. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll always kind of talk about situations, but we won't put that much thought into it. And, and like I said to Kieran, you know, we do that. Say we change everything and it goes perfectly right. Then what happens for MK Duns? What happens for Plymouth? Like you can't, you can't take your foot off the gas that much. And if you apply that much pressure on, on one team, you've got to do it for everybody. And, and we will not have the capabilities to do that. And equally, the players won't have the mental capacity to have three different game plans that are going to vary in, in its structure in their amount. So our focus is on us because we understand that and we're going to play our way and we're going to do what we do. And and you know what? We'll take we'll, we'll take the game to Portsmouth and then to MK and to Plymouth and, and we'll see what we get out of it at the end. Yeah, no, and um, with obviously last time I was with Vegas, you did unfortunately lose, but you did say how there was positives in that result. With uh, what to you was the positives from that game? What you, did you see and go, okay, good, we're clearly working towards something, you know, whatever I'm setting out for my players is working out and we're clearly, you know, focusing on the game plan here. What is, uh, what, what was those positives? I think, you know, the way that Watford play um, and the amount that they rotate, you know, they're so kind of unstructured to a degree. And I mean that in the nicest possible way that, you know, players will, they move on their intent. So, you know, send them if they're going high, they will just go where they know that the space is, is going to be or where they want to receive the ball. And, and the difference between sort of tier three and tier four is that, you know, players play certain formations in, in tier four and they'll be very structured towards it. So if they're playing like a 4 3 3, then they'll stick to that and the players will play in those formations generally. So for me, it's about as a group, the players have really adapted to, to those sort of styles and we, we weren't bullied by that. We didn't just go following players all around the pitch and have our forward at left back air and our left back playing right wing trying to follow players. We were we were strong, we were confident within what we're trying to achieve. And that's the important thing is that, you know, we had respect for Watford, of course we did, but we also went, we, we're going to do things our way. And if they fail, they fail because I've got them wrong or the staff have got them wrong or the, you know, we as a whole group have got them wrong or we're going to get it right because we all have got it right together. So it's important that we all stick together. We did that. And and like I said, I'm proud of the performance because of that. So yeah, loads of individual positives, loads of unit positives, loads of, you know, team positives. But I think for me, it was about, you know, kind of going, if we're going to, if we're going to die, we're going to die on our own sword. We're going to do it our way. And, and, you know, we're not going to come back into the dressing room after going, if we'd have done this, or maybe we should have done that, or we should have changed this, or, we shouldn't have changed that. Like we we went about it with the way we want to play the game. And yeah, we were unfortunate. Of course we were. You know, we're two-one down. We go, we go after the game, we leave players up front, we leave loads of spaces, we try and get those goals. And and obviously we didn't. And they only scored a 94th minute third goal, which which kills the game. So look, we take that on the chin. Me personally, I take that one on the chin for changing things in the last 15 minutes to try and get an equalizer, but I'll never not do that if we're two one down or drawing one all, and, and we've got an opportunity to go win the game or draw the game. We're absolutely going to go and do that. Losing two one or three one or four one doesn't make any difference, um, or it doesn't to me anyway. Yeah, 